Hi, in this video, we're going to learn about the types of habitats and this is under the interactions module of the uh, upper block signs. All right, under the interactions module, different types of habitats. Uh, it is also together with living together and food chain and food webs. All right, so let's get started. So what are decomposers? What are decomposers? Basically, these are decomposers, worm, mushroom or fungi, uh, insects and bacteria. So what do they do? They eat dead plants and animals. So I'll give you some examples of what decomposers look like. So this is a, a log. Come, let me write it down. This is a, a log or a rotting log because this tree has uh, fallen down and it's rotting and all these things here are fungus all right so all this is like a mushroom this funny thing here all of them are mushrooms um, these are also another kind of mushroom all right uh, you might know them as toadstools specifically this type of mushroom is known as a toadstool uh, this is an uh, an enlarged picture of bacteria so bacteria is also classified under a decomposer okay so let's move on what do decomposers do over here what do decomposers do and they break down dead matter and animal waste into simple substances so dead matter it consists of dead plants and animals all right um and what about animal waste all right so all the waste that comes out from the animal or the poo uh the urine the animal uh, will urine on the, the forest floor and then these decomposers will break it down into simple substances so what what does all these simple substances do what happens to the simple substances broken down by the decomposers it is returned to the soil as nutrients so basically what the decomposers decomposers will eat all the dead animals and plants and then uh, they will break it down into nutrients for you know for what for you guessed it new plants which will be eaten by the animals and then you know it will be decomposed again so this is basically a cycle right this is a cycle that um decomposers do so without decomposers there'll be lots of dead animals and plants lying in the forest with uh and they will just be there and it will not be returned back Okay, so decomposers are important because they ensure that the earth is not covered in dead metal and, and dead matter and animal waste. Because otherwise, if not for them, uh, the whole earth will be full of uh, will be full of uh, dead people or dead animals and dead plants, which is not good. Okay, next, what is an organism? An organism is actually just simply a living thing. It can be anything that's living. All right, so it can be a plant, it can be an animal, it can be a fungus, it can be a bacteria. Basically, it's any living thing. And let's revise a bit. What are the three characteristics? Three characteristics of living things. Do you remember? Okay. Number one is that they grow. Number two is that they respond to changes in their environment number three is they can reproduce so anything that fulfills these three characteristics will be uh, classified under an organism okay let's look at the next part what is a population all right so a population is a group of same organisms or similar organisms that live together and reproduce so this is a population of penguins okay so a group of organisms that are of the same kind uh, that live together and reproduce is called a population. So 
what is the population of human beings in Singapore? So maybe it's like maybe 5 million or so. All right. So that's the population of human beings in Singapore. So a population includes the what and the what of the organism, which is the young and the adult. So in this population of penguins, there are young penguins. All right. And there are also old penguins and even penguin eggs are included in the population All right so the entire life cycle so if it's four stage so if it's a four stage life cycle egg larva larva to pupa pupa to adult adult back to egg so entire four stage population this entire four stage life cycle will be under one population all right, so there'll be a lot of questions that ask you, oh, how many population are there in the adult? So let's say this is a mosquito. So adult uh, mosquito plus egg plus larva. So there are like 10 larva. There's like 12 pupa. There are 20 eggs and there are 10 adults. So what's the population? So it's actually 20 plus 10 plus 12 plus 10. All right, so that's the entire population of the adult. So what is a habitat? All right, a habitat is a place where the organism lives. So a habitat for humans are our houses. So a habitat for a habitat for like an organism like grasshopper would be in the field or in the garden that's where they stay that's where the grasshopper stays so what is a community a community consists of many populations living together in a particular place so we're going to look at a few a few communities all right uh, so we are going to like look at the field community community we're going to look at the pond look at the seashore and a few others so a field community, what is this? this is basically in a field, uh, so be, let's, let's draw a field. There'll be like grasses, short grasses everywhere, maybe tall grasses over here, tall grasses over here, grasses. So basically it's like grass and then some tall grasses over here. Not many trees, uh, trees will be forest. So where are these plants found? Lalang, Mimosa, Love Grass, they're found in the field community. Let's take a look at how they look like. So lalang looks like this. This is a lalang plant. Um, these are the these are the seeds of the lalang plant, and this is how they reproduce, uh, either flying through the wind. So lalang will, because it's very light and uh, they have hair. So when the wind blows in this direction, the seeds will fly in this direction. So this is a mimosa plant over here. This is a mimosa plant. Uh, these are the leaves and they will close up they will close up when you touch them all right and it's actually uh, stinging it will sting and these are the flowers of the mimosa plant so this is a love grass which is also commonly found in singapore so love grass these are uh, these are the seeds these are the seeds of the love plant and they can easily be caught uh, on your pens or on an animal's fur so they disperse by animals this is a slug all right so a slug is basically like a snail without the cover so if you have a cover uh, of the snail like that's covered up okay then it becomes a snail um, this is an earthworm so earthworm earthworms will burrow into the earth all right what they do is they they go they dig inside and they will loosen the soil so that helps to uh that help that helps plants to grow okay so let's come back to the words where are these found grasshoppers so you know what grasshoppers look like i feel i hope slug so that's a slug over here this is a slug all right uh snail so they are found in the field community in the stems and leaves of plants where are these found earthworms and termites they also found the tunnel in the soil in fields why are earthworms useful to the field community 
they loosen the soil as they tunnel through it and allows rainwater and air to mix so that plants can grow easily all right because if the soil is very hard then the the seeds of the plants will not be able to grow uh, germinate okay let's take a look at another community which is the garden community in singapore so where are these plants these plants found rose plants lilies and ferns uh, let's take a look at where how they look like so they are found in the garden community so these are rose plants so this is a rose these are the rose uh, that's a stem so if you if you zoom in and see you can actually see a lot of thorns over here all right so rose has a lot of thorns uh, this is a spider lily all right so this plant is called a spider lily very common in singapore if you look around your house uh, you should be able to see some of this being planted this are bougainvillas all right so bougainvillas are pink pink in color and very common as well so this is a bird nest fern one of the most common ferns in singapore so a lot of times let's say if i i draw a tree this bird nest fern will be found somewhere over here all right or over here okay so if you imagine a tree is like that and the sun is over here so what's going to happen there will basically it will basically be hidden under the uh this part is like shade okay this part is all shade so what happens that the fern can survive and that's why you see right they have very large leaves the leaves are very large okay so they have large leaves to catch the little sunlight that goes through the tree that hits the fern all right so they have all these large leaves mm, large leaves to help them catch that little bit of sunlight because they usually grow under trees right the last uh flower that we're going to look at is the heliconia okay so this is also another very common flower that's found in singapore uh, so these are the flowers it's red and yellow very common if you look around you shall see you, you should be able to see them okay let's take a look at the next one where are these found earthworms snails bees butterflies beetles and ants garden community okay I've, I've shown you the earthworm just now so snails you should know what it looks like bees uh, you should know so it's an insect butterflies beetles and ants so another one that you might not know is ladybirds so ladybirds look like that they have spots on their bodies okay so some people say the spots tell you the age of the ladybird but that's generally not true so ladybirds feed on this thing called aphids a p h i d s so these little things here are all aphids and they aphids eat plants they eat the leaves so we, they, that's a bad thing they are pests aphids are pests so what the ladybird do is they will eat the aphids so ladybirds are actually known as our friends and they're known as our friends because they eat the aphids which are not our friends because they eat the plants that we want uh, last one let's look at some fern this is another kind of fern all right so these are smaller leaves so and these are another kind of fern so they have green leaves as well so they so they make their own food okay but ferns being ferns they will reproduce by reproduce by what live young or what eggs reproduce by spores okay next we're going to look at the seashore community so the seashore community is exposed during what and covered in seawater during what is exposed during low tide and covered during high tide so there are some very famous seashore community in Singapore. One of them is called the uh, Chick Jawa. All right, so very famous seashore community, and it's found in Pulau 
Ubin. So if you have time, you can actually go there, ask your parents to bring you there and take a look. So what can be found in the seashore community? You can find sea anemones, crabs, starfish and clams found in the seashore community. Let's take a look. So these are sea anemones in low tide. Uh, yes. All right, so you can see these are the sea anemones. All right, so if you if it's in high tide uh, under the water, then you can see that they have these tentacles coming out. They have the tentacles coming out. In high tide, they will come out and they will catch small organisms to eat. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things that are commonly found in Singapore uh, seaside community, seashore community. So this is a flower crab. So flower crab, uh, it's very very thin, thin uh, pincers. All right, and uh, commonly steamed in Singapore. Can catch it um, everywhere. I've actually seen be a person catching it at uh, Sambawang. It's a Sambawang near the jetty. So he caught about what I think thirty to fifty of these crabs, all right, uh, in one night. So that's a lot. There's a lot of uh, such crabs in Singapore. It's uh, very delicious when it's steamed. Okay, so this is a starfish. Starfish. So this particular starfish is known as a Penang sand star. Alright, so starfish basically uh, has a star shape over here. Alright, so there are many, many different kinds of starfish with different colors and different shapes, but generally they all have a star shape. That's why they are called starfish. Uh, this is interesting. Alright, so clams, you know, you go to hawker centers and what do you order clams, right? So this is actually digging for clams. So this is soil. You're digging for clams in Singapore. And this is your clam. All right, this is how your clam looks like actually it's found in this kind of soil now they don't look so delicious anymore do they all right so uh the the food that the, the clam that we eat the clams that we eat in singapore are like gong gong or like la la and stuff like that they're all found in this kind of places all right very very dirty soil um very dirty places so that's why don't eat too many clams Okay, next we're going to look at mangrove swamps. All right, so what are mangrove swamps? Basically, this is a mangrove swamp. Uh, they are muddy. There's water. This is water over here. It's flooded during high tide. So during high tide, uh, the water will flood and you will only see the top of the tree like this. Okay, poor in oxygen. So low tide, you can see all the uh, the roots over here. So how does mangrove plants help adapt to the seawater and low oxygen? They have prop-like roots. So these, so basically they're low water, right? And then they have roots that allow them to stand up. Okay, and then this is the, the tree. So their prop-like roots support and help to absorb oxygen. So over here, these roots will support the plants and they will absorb oxygen as well. Okay, so where can these be found? Mudskippers, crabs, crocodile herons, they're found in the mangrove. Let's take a look at how they look like. Uh, that's a mudskipper. So this is a mudskipper. It's called a mudskipper because it can actually live outside the water. All right, so let's draw the mudskipper. You know, the fish. Okay, and then they have some fins over here. The eyes and the mouth looks like a shark, but it's a mud skipper. So they have a gills over here where there are these little bags at the back. Okay, so these BAG bags huh, uh, where they can store water. And then the gills will use the water to breathe. And that's why they can come out of the water. And that's what you see over here, right? This part and this part is a bit enlarged a bit swollen so that's where it stores the water so mangrove they are mangrove crabs and these are what i call tree climbing crabs you know why they are called tree climbing crabs any ideas well if you guessed because they can climb trees then you are correct okay they are called tree climbing crabs because they can climb trees 
Interesting, huh? Crab can climb trees. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, herons. These are herons or herons. It's my mark. Yeah, so these are herons. Um, so they eat small insects plus fishes. So they're carnivorous. So what's the adaptation by mudskipper to survive in the mangrove? It can breathe in and out of the water. So this is also breathing in and out of the water. So they are breathing as well. All right. So they can store water. They can store water in gill chambers. Plus they can breathe in and out of the water and that's why they can survive. Okay, so that's uh, mangrove. So let's move on to now the pond community. So pond community. So if you look at your school pond, that's the pond. So pond community is basically just a small pool of water uh, and there'll be a lot of things uh, living in it. All right. So first plant that we're going to learn about is hydrilla. Hydrilla is, this is a hydrilla. Uh, if you notice, it's entirely under the water so it's a sub it's submerged in water produce oxygen for a aquatic animals and it, you know that it produces oxygen and it uh, photosynthesized because it has green leaves okay so the green leaves will help it to photosynthesize and trap sunlight make it into food blah 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 um, produce oxygen so on and so forth Okay, cattails. So what are cattails? Where's my marker? Cattails. Okay, so these are cattails. If you look at these things, I assume when the person named these cattails, he thought that they look like cattails, but honestly, I don't think so. I don't know. Um, the cattails are also known as partially submerged. All right, so there's water here. The roots will be here, stems will grow out, and then the cattail, the part, and then the other part. Okay, and then there'll be like other shoots coming out. So half under the water, half above the water, you call it partially submerged. So what are some uses of it? It provides frogs and fish to lay eggs. Why do they need to lay eggs at cattails and not just lay eggs anywhere? So that the young uh, frogs and fishes got ha have or like oh God, have places to hide. Hide from who? Hide from you? Hide from me? Hide from predators. So they hide from predators. Okay, let's look at another organism. It's called tubifex. All right, tubifex worms. So these are tubifex worms. In Chinese, it's called chewing. So uh, they usually, we can buy it at the aquarium shops for our fish to eat. Um, I've actually seen them selling the freeze or freeze dried version of Tubifex worms. It comes in a, a cube like that. Okay, so you can put it in your freezer. And and when after you, you want to feed the fish, then you just freeze, freeze dried, not freeze dried. Freeze dried all right after you want to feed your fish you just take it out and you put it in your aquarium and then the fish can eat it okay so what do these worms eat they eat dead plants and animals okay so a lot of other uh fishes will eat these worms but these worms eat dead plants and animals what eats tubifex worms fishes a uh, lot of fishes eat it where do tubifex worm live in a the pond they live at the bottom so if you have a pond like that then the worms will be around here Okay, then there'll be like some submerged plants here. There will, the, so the water level is here. There'll be some cattails over here. Some cattails over here. And then they'll have uh, some fishes over here. All right, that's how a pond community looks like. So let's look at the next one, which is a pond. Skaters, right? Again, um, why do you think they call it a pond skater? It's because they skate on top of the pond, uh, water surface on the pond. So if you notice, this is actually the water surface. 
and the pond skater is uh, standing on the water. All right, it's so light that it doesn't go through the water. And if you see right, it will just move in this direction. It will like skate on the water. So it's quite cool. So where do pond skaters move? They move on the water surface. Them uh, quite often. So duckweed, duckweed is a floating plant. So duckweed looks like this. It's the leaves. These are the leaves, all right? These green things are the leaves. So they are small. They are floating plants and they photosynthesize all right because they are green in color uh the other one that you will see often is water hyacinth all right water hyacinth also a floating plant looks like this also photosynthesize uh, because they have chlorophyll they have flowers so they reproduce by seeds so water hyacinth um if let's say you have a a pond like that all right a pond and if they are like oh my god the whole pond is full of water hyacinth what's going to happen so that means the sun ding, 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 will not be able to shine inside and that means if i have hydrilla inside all right uh, it will not be able to make oxygen it will block uh, the the plants inside will make oxygen and all the fishes will die because they will not have oxygen to breathe. Okay, so dragon fly, they will have an egg and they will have the nymph and to the adult. So this is the nymph and it lives at the bottom of the pond somewhere here. Right? So you find dragonfly nymph living over here. And these guys can live up to f live up to five years. All right, five years before, so you can stay as a nymph for up to five years before becoming a dragonfly. So that's quite a long time. Leaf litter is basically um, an area where there are many dead leaves. So these are dead leaves, and they are covering. So leaf litter is very dark, very damp okay it's dark because uh the sun let's say the sun is over here the sun is sun is over here the sun shining down this first leaf this first leaf will block the sun and basically anything below it will be dark so it's very dark it's damp because uh it's usually found in the forest or uh, jungle environment it's always raining it's very damp it's just a very damp environment Another thing that you will find are spiders. So these are spiders. Okay, also found in the leaf litter community. And you will find things like lizards as well. Lizards, spiders, um, millipedes, centipedes. Yeah, so these are some common things you will find in the leaf litter community.